Jack Sparrow. Not sure I deserve it. Did you know in Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl, Captain Jack, played by Johnny Depp, is depicted with gold teeth? Interestingly, it was Depp's own idea to give the character gold teeth. However, he anticipated that the film executives would want him to have fewer gold teeth. So, he instructed his dentist to implant more gold teeth as a negotiating tactic. Ultimately, the number of gold teeth that Captain Jack had in the film was exactly what Depp had intended from the outset. Did you know in Platoon, Kevin Dillon, who was playing Bunny, was flipping out when they filmed the scene where his character beats the villager boy to death? Because the guy he was doing it to was a Filipino the filmmakers had picked up along the way. He was deaf and blind in one eye and missing a leg. Dillon felt bad for the guy because he was a nervous wreck the whole time. And Dillon wasn't sure if he knew they were just filming a movie. The scene was so intense that even his mom couldn't bear to watch it. I'm the best. I could take them more than anybody. Did you know in Raging Bull, melons and tomatoes were crushed to make the punch impact sounds, while gunshots were used to recreate the camera flash sounds? The basic recordings were purposely destroyed by sound engineer Frankie Warner to prevent him from being reused. Did you know in Rush Hour, after Tucker shoots down Clive's car in the movie, he does a Michael Jackson dance? Three years later, Tucker appeared in Michael Jackson's You Rock My World music video and continued to do Michael Jackson impressions in the sequels of Rush Hour. I'm LAPD. You under arrest. Did you know in Rush Hour, Jackie Chan said the scene when his character first meets Chris Tucker's character was very similar to the first time the actors met in real life at the offices of the William Morris Agency. Chan said Tucker was talking so fast that after the meeting ended, Chan told his manager he doesn't understand any of the words coming out of his mouth. And that was a line that was used in the film. You speak any English? Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Did you know that the movie Saints and Soldiers was shot on 35mm film? The film's use of 35mm film contributed to its organic and natural feel. The use of practical effects and practical locations further added to the film's authenticity and realism. Ryan Little used a combination of handheld and steadicam shots to bring an intimate feel to the action and create a sense of urgency during the battle scenes. It took $11 million to film the Omaha beach scene, which involved as many as 1,000 extras. Some of these extras were members of the Irish Army Reserve. The filmmakers employed 20 to 30 amputees who were outfitted with prosthetic limbs to depict the loss of their character's limbs. I was in the Army. In the opening interrogation scene of the movie Scarface, the character Tony Montana is being questioned by immigration officials. The dialogue in this scene was largely improvised by actor Al Pacino, who took inspiration from his own experiences growing up in the Bronx. This was when I was a kid, you know? Mm -hmm. You should see the other kid. Tim Robbins, who played the character of Andy Dufresne in Shawshank Redemption, prepared for his role by spending some time in solitary confinement. He requested to be locked up in isolation for a period of time to understand the experience, even though he was aware that his experience would not be identical, since it was voluntary. Did you know in Spider-Man Homecoming, Salvatore Totino, the cinematographer, had a long-standing collaboration with the movie's director, John Watts? His ability to balance action and humor, as well as his work with the visual effects team, contributed to the film's breathtaking sequences. Hey, is this anybody's bike? Luke Skywalker was just a farm boy, until he received a mysterious message from a princess. Did you know in Star Wars A New Hope, George Lucas was convinced that the movie would fail, so he didn't go to the premiere. Instead, he went on a vacation to Hawaii with his close friend Steven Spielberg. It was during this trip that they conceived the idea for Raiders of the Lost Ark, which was released in 1981. May the Force be with you. You're a bum! And that's all you'll ever be! A bum! Did you know that in the movie Stripes, Bill Butler chose to shoot the movie in anamorphic widescreen, giving the film a distinct look that sets it apart from other comedies of its time? The wide framing allowed for bigger and more epic shots, which worked perfectly for a movie that was all about rebellion and pushing against the establishment. 
Did you know in Terminator 2, Robert Patrick underwent an intense running regimen and trained himself to breathe solely through his nose? This was done to portray a cyborg capable of running at high speeds without exhibiting signs of exhaustion. He dedicated himself to his training so much that he was able to effortlessly keep pace with Edward Furlong's dirt bike. In The Amazing Spider-Man 2, the final showdown between the Green Goblin and Spider-Man was shot inside an actual clock tower, where the temperature often rose to 115 degrees Fahrenheit. Actor Dane DeHaan, who played the Green Goblin, had to endure wearing prosthetics and makeup that took three and a half hours to apply, as well as a goblin suit that weighed 50 pounds, around 23 kilograms, and couldn't be opened without power tools. On the set, the medic became worried when DeHaan lost seven pounds in a day due to the heat, and crew members were instructed to pour buckets of ice on him and down his suit between takes. However, this proved ineffective because the ice melted into steam before it could cool him down. Eventually, a tubing system was installed in Dahan's goblin suit to circulate cold water and cool him down. You don't even need to wear makeup. Sorry, what? I just said you don't even need to wear makeup. Did you know in the fallout, the film was shot in just 18 days, with a budget of less than $1 million. Despite its low budget and tight shooting schedule, the movie has been praised for its strong performances, direction, and writing. Did you know that in The Flight of the Phoenix, the items that look like shotgun cartridges that the captain uses to start the engines are specially designed blank cartridges Where? used in a starter yeah. known as a Kaufman starter? The expanding gases from the fired cartridge are channeled to a mechanical device that rapidly spins the engine up to start speed. They allow the engines to be started without having to carry heavy starter motors and batteries and were widely used in military aircraft in World War II, including on the Merlin engines of Supermarine Spitfires. Did you know in The Godfather Part 3, Francis Ford Coppola had only a year to write, direct and edit the film. Marlon Brando did not memorize most of his lines for the film and often read from cue cards. He believed that doing a spontaneous reading and using the first unpracticed take was the best way to achieve an authentic performance. I believe in America. America has made my fortune. In The Godfather, Willis used Rembrandt lighting to accentuate facial features through deep shadows. The film's subdued color palette, focusing on earthy tones, enhances its somber tone. Unease and tension were created through various camera angles and compositions, including extreme close-ups and low angles. The Godfather also makes use of symbolism, such as the use of oranges to foreshadow death, and the use of dark, ominous settings to represent the underworld. I believe in America. America has made my fortune. In The Godfather, Willis used Rembrandt lighting to accentuate facial features through deep shadows. The film's subdued color palette, focusing on earthy tones, enhances its somber tone. Unease and tension were created through various camera angles and compositions, including extreme close-up. Now, the price for the license is less than $20,000, am I right? That's right. Now, why would I ever consider paying more than that? Because I intend to squeeze you. Did you know in Godfather the sequel, Al Pacino didn't like the original script and refused to do the movie. So Francis Ford Coppola rewrote the entire script in one weekend to make it better. Later, Pacino admitted that he didn't actually dislike the first script so much, but knew that it could be improved. Did you know in The Great Raid, the movie was made in 2002, but it didn't come out for a while because it got delayed a few times. Finally, it was released in August 2005 by Miramax Films. They were getting rid of some movies before Bob and Harvey Weinstein left to pursue their own thing. I am honored to introduce to you the creator of the Hunger Games themselves. The new movie serves as a prequel to the popular 2012 film The Hunger Games. It is set 64 years before the events depicted in the Hunger Games. Disappears. 